Uh, so, first question. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Hello, Senator Santorum. Hello, what's your name? Rachel Schwartz. Rachel, thank I'm you. a junior here at Princeton, and I'm here today to confront you as a child of lesbian parenting. I am here to tell you that I was only at a disadvantage as a child of gay parents because of you and the crusade you helped lead against my family's right to exist. You hurt me. You, Senator, were a destabilizing force in my childhood and in my family. This is the truth of my experience. It is a truth that you cannot refute. Now I ask you, Senator, to tell me the story of how one real individual child's life was helped by your efforts to fight against the rights of the LGBT community and the legalization of gay marriage. Thank you. Well, if I'm you cannot, can you acknowledge and But I can, so that, that let, me, let me answer the question, okay? So let me, let me ex uh, first off, thank you for your comments. I'm sorry that you feel the way you do. Um, I think it's really important when we discuss these kinds of very personal issues, and they are, and I mean, obviously it's very personal to you, and, and I respect that, uh, that we understand that public policy discussions have tremendous impact, positive and negative, on individuals, and that Everyone who gets engaged in the, as I do, I, got in, I get engaged in public politics, I know that there is no win-win on many, many issues out there. Not everybody wins. If everybody won, then we wouldn't have public policy debates. I mean, if everybody was gonna be benefited by this and there was no downside or there was nobody that would not benefit from this, then we wouldn't have much of a debate, would we? So we accept that. So, I think it's really important to understand because she's made a very compelling case. You know, you hurt me. And, and I accept that the arguments that I was making hurt her feelings and, and maybe more, right? And I accept that. And, and I understood that when I was making them. That makes me a mean guy. No, not necessarily. If I did it because I wanted to hurt her, that would make me a horrible human being if that's why I did it. But if I did it because I actually thought that the vast majority of people in America would be better off with what I was advocating, understanding that there would be some who would be hurt by it, understanding that because that happens in every public policy debate. There are winners and losers. What, you, what I focus on doing is two things. Number one, First, what is right? Now, this goes back to the conversation we just had. We have a set of values and principles that we have lived by and this country was founded on. Western civilization was founded on. Those moral codes, I believe, are true and therefore worth fighting for. Does that mean that moral codes that are true don't have negative consequences to some people? Yes, they do. Of course they do. But for me, you have to speak the truth and argue for the truth, one. Two, you have to look at the impact on society as a whole. If we made every decision on well, any issue based upon one situation, I mean, we'd be changing the law every time someone came with a story about how the law hurt them. You can't do that. You have to take a step back and understand that yes, there will be people disadvantaged. And our hope, and my hope, is to try to ameliorate the harm, but not to back away from what you believe is the good. So I was making the argument that we should not change our marriage laws. So understand, I was not the agent of change here. The laws were in place, and there were some who wanted to change it. My argument was that that would be detrimental to millions of children in America. 
And the reason it would be detrimental, and this goes back to the, to the point I was making earlier, what we've seen over the last, let's just be 60 years, we've seen a dramatic change in social mores around sex and relationship and marriage. And that transformation has had a huge impact on the American family. One of the things I'm very clear about saying, I will say it here, same-sex marriage did not destroy heterosexual marriage. It was destroyed long before. The reason same-sex marriage became a viable public policy discussion is because marriage had been so transformed through the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s that it didn't look like, well, something that you have no idea what marriage is. Because marriage today is nothing like what it was. What was marriage? The Mar of women by men. Marriage was a union between one man and one woman. Why? Because they were made complementary. Men and women were made complementary for the purposes of a bonding relationship, which other relationships can be bonding relationships, but it's unique because it's the only relationship that can be unitive and procreative and therefore essential for society to continue. Every culture in the history of the world has recognized that. Let me repeat that. Every culture in the history of the world has recognized this unique relationship and supported providing some unique status for that relationship to encourage that relationship. Why? For the furtherance of the culture, the civilization. If men and women don't come together and bond and have children, there is no more civilization. If they do and they don't stay together and form stable families, then we have what I've talked about earlier. We have a degradation of society. And so what I've said is that we need to change the debate and that's what I was referring to earlier, and focus less on how marriage should change, whether it's same sex or multiple, you know, plural marriage or whatever else is on the horizon, and focus on how can we reclaim and help re knit the traditional American, the traditional family, not American, but traditional family throughout the 4,000 years of human history because it's important, I think we just had a discussion about that, that it is important that that relationship and that institution be valued. And my point with same-sex marriage is that same-sex marriage reaffirms what marriage has become. And what has marriage become? An equal partnership between men and women. Exactly. Marriage has become about adults. She's right. Marriage has become about adults. It's not about kids anymore. It's not about procreation. It's not about forming families, having children, and raising those children. That's not what marriage is about. We've lost that over the last 50, 60 years in this country. It's no longer the reason you get married. And so as a result of that, what we've done is just reinforce that marriage is about you. You see, I didn't get into this because it's a little bit but the biggest problem is we've come to a society that was based on the Judeo-Christian principles of sacrificial love and self-sacrifice and doing things for others and giving of others to everything is about me. And marriage fell into this same trap. I remember I, I had a guy who used to work for me and he wanted to have lunch with me one day and he sat down and he started pouring his heart out to me over Chinese food, and he said, I'm not happy with my marriage. I said, what's wrong? Well, I just, you know, it feels like it's just like a one-way street, and, you know, I'm just like giving all the time, and, I'm, and, and I said, good. I said, did you get married for what that person could do for you? Is that why you got married? If you did, you got married for the wrong reason. Marriage is about sacrificial love. It's about giving yourself to your beloved completely. Hoping for 
wanting, not say you shouldn't want or hope, that someone will, is in there for the same reason, to give themselves to you, but not dependent upon them giving themselves to you. But see, now we get into marriage like we get into ordering chicken at the grocery store. It's a contract, you know? If the chicken doesn't, isn't any good, I'm bringing the chicken back. You gotta give me a good chicken. And that's what it is with marriage. Hey, if this if it ain't working out, then you know it's, it's just like chicken. You know, we'll just give me give me a new piece of chicken. That's not what marriage was about. It was deeper. It was deeper. It was a commitment. It was a commitment not just to each other, but a commitment to the family that would come from that. And that commitment provided a stable foundation for children to feel safe. And that, sorry, I don't think I said anything about chaining anybody to anything. Uh, so what role play and a man's play? That's up. That's up for that relationship to determine. Look, I, I, I was born in 1958. My mother always made more money than my father. So I, you, you're talking to the wrong guy here. Okay. No one's, no one's talking about confining anybody to anything. But I am saying, confining you to what a marriage should be about if you want marriage to work. If you don't care, if we don't want to reclaim marriage, then we can continue to play this game that marriage is about you. And you get married several times, you get divorced several times, your kids can be without dads. Great, wonderful, hope you feel good. Here's the clue, you aren't gonna feel good. You're not gonna be happy. I have no problem That's with not That's the problem. Okay. Thank you. Next. I tried. I'm sorry if I didn't do a good job.